Okay, guys, can you just hear me? I'm just double checking. I am doing an iPad, so it's a bit more of an unconventional format, but regardless, it is quite handy. Okay, so this session is a little bit different from Hardeep's ones. Uh, I'm just going to be there. Um, okay, this one is going to be a bit more interactive, and it's just going to be me, um, well, me being me in this case. I'm going to use the, this format. Okay, that's a bit better now. Okay, so, um, so for you, some of you that know, don't know me, hello, my guys, my name is Martin. Can you guys just see? I'm not sure if you can see because my Zoom is a bit weird. Um, this is an iPad, and I'm just testing um, a different format. I'm just going to stop sharing. So, yeah, there we go. You guys can see me. Hey, guys, my name is Martin, and today I'll be running the six minutes. Um, six minute session. Okay, there we go. Start broadcasting. I'm going to start very soon. I'll just check in that you guys can actually see. Okay, so that is perfect. Um, yes, you guys will get a recording after. I should actually just connect with the second phone just so I can actually see the chat. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, Okay, so Sebastian, I'm not sure if you are here, but uh, if you are here, can you just do me a favor? Uh, are you able to just send me a... Actually, I'm, I'm gonna do something else, one second. And uh, no, I can't do it. Uh, okay, so Sebastian, I'm not sure if you're here, but can you just send me a recording on WhatsApp so I can just join my second phone so I just don't have to open the chat and Q&A like this all the time. Uh, I should have planned for this. Um, yeah, can you just do me a favor? Can you just send a, um, an invite link so, because I can just join on my phone as well so I can just see the chat while I'm doing the presentations. I'm going to uh, invite, copy link, and then just put it here. And paste. There we go. Thank you, that is perfect. I'm just going to unmute myself and I'll just join my second account. And then I can read the chat. Perfect. Okay, guys. So um, before we just start, what do you guys know about the. Okay, let's just check the QA. So, will we run all these six met sessions? Yes, I'll be running all of them. Um, that's about it. I, um, I've been working with the BMAT for like, well, since 2019. So, I have quite a lot of experience with the BMAT. So, I'll be running all these sessions. As hard deep, uh, can't run them, fortunately. Um, okay. Okay, 5A and the essay grades. Uh, I'll be going over that, not the session, because the session is more of a bit of the general. So I'm just introducing what the BMAT is. Um, those are, that's like the biggest thing here. I'm just going to give you like a very nice, broad introduction. Um, and I think that's just the, the best and the most appropriate way to do it. Okay. Um, Let's do the chats. Uh, I'm just going to see the chats and then I'll just start. Okay, so we yeah, have three sections. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it is harder than, well, it depends. I personally find the UCAT harder than BMAT, like because I enjoy the BMAT. Um, it's also an element of luck. But without further ado, I am actually going to the real deal, which is the slides. So, um, okay. I should be joining with the other phone in a second, but in the meantime. So welcome to the first uh, SIGMA surgery. Uh, this one will be for um, BMAT, so like a rough introduction. We'll just see, um, you know, most of, you know, we're, we're not going over like any specific strategies. I'll just teach you, you know, how, how the BMAT is, how it's structured. Then I'll have the specimen of paper saved on Keynotes. So I'll just be a uh, good notes. And then I'll just be going walking over it. So it's quite relaxed and quite casual as well. Um, so yeah, that is about it. So if you have any questions, please email them to team at sexmed.co.uk. And if you'd like to talk with me personally, you can also go um, on, you know, on WhatsApp, um, on the Sexmed group chats, and then I'll just answer any questions you might have. So yeah, welcome to the Sexmed surgeries. I just adjusted the card a little bit, so it's a bit more lively. So who am I? Um, some of you might know me from the Reddit's uh, BMA exam. And I am the owner. So my name is Martin, and 
uh, I was actually gap year students, but I've been uh, working on BMAT for quite a while. Or well, for some of you, gap year, if you are from Guildford. <laughs> Hello, guys. Um, yeah, I love badminton as well, and I love memes. So as you guys can see here, um, I own the subreddits. It has a lot of visits. So in December, we had 13,000 visits. So as you can see, gets quite busy uh, during the um, you know months leading up to the BMATs. So I'm expecting around 10,000 um, to 20,000 visits um, for you know, October and November. So I highly recommend all of you looking at the subreddit because you can ask three questions, there's a Discord server as well. You also have the text message one, but um, I'm just there all the time. Also, um, you know, we have a lot of we have a lot of moderators. There are and medics from Leeds. So if anyone's applying plane to Leeds, then you guys can ask him questions. We are currently on the way to get a couple of more medics. So we can get medics from Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial UCL, Lancaster, so all the BMAT unis. So hopefully you guys are gonna get um, you know, a lot of support in that area. Uh, about me, so I actually took um, seven A levels at the start of year 12, but I dropped one. Um, yeah, I would not recommend, you don't need seven A levels. Uh, for medicine, but I just talking because I love it. I love my subjects. And those subjects are, are also the same in the BIMA. So biology, chemistry, physics, maths, Spanish, and Portuguese, along with AS for maths. So uh, this one was giving me some problems, so I dropped it. I scored top 5% in the BMAT, despite having technical issues. Uh, as you guys can probably, some of you know, last year we had most of metal and it was a nightmare, basically. This year, you guys have a new software, uh, which I might actually mention either in this session or the next one. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely mention that in the next session, as we can also walk over the um, software on my laptop. Um, so yeah, I got top five percentile in the BMATs. I've written some BMAT books. No, you can't find them on Amazon. They're like mostly books aimed at teaching tutors for the BMATs. Go away. Um, I also taught the BMAT for hundreds of hours and have insider knowledge as well. So yeah, if you guys want to check out uh, my subreddits, it's www.reddit.com dash r dash BMAT exam. Uh, I'll also be launching, uh, I'm launching a YouTube channel uh, with medicine application tips uh, and it will launch later this week or maybe, no, not later, so next week. Um, so yeah, I'll talk about mostly BMAT because that's what I actually just enjoy doing. Like, I just love it. I've been studying the test, the structure. I even have, you know, some contact um, with the chief examiner of, you know, Cambridge Assessment. So it's, it's quite nice. I enjoy what I do. Um, so yeah, I also do cats and interviews, uh, but that's not really the priority because those are just secondary. Okay, so you might be thinking, okay, so you said that this was a general session. So what uh, what is the point? You know, is this going to be like those useful sessions where you're not teaching me anything and it's just, so, just like broad stuff? Well, kind of is. Uh, it's not useless, don't worry. Um, so the session is going to be introducing the BMATs for those that don't know anything about the BMATs. So I'll just be telling you how many questions there are. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like very general, like timings, you know, how to register, etc. So what you'll get, you'll get away with. So concise information. So concise information is so helpful because you just have a lot of time. You don't have to do your own research. Everything's here. Everything's just very nice and organized for you. Uh, so let's look at um, what you must learn without wasting any time. I'll answer any questions at the end. So feel free to ask as many questions as you want. I'm here to help. And you can also send me questions to his team at sexmed.co.uk. That's also something that... Um, yeah, sorry, guys. Okay. Um. One second. Okay. Um. Sorry, guys. That was just an emergency. Um. Okay. They just decided the whole thing. One second. Um. Sorry, guys. That was just like my cats. Uh. That had an accent. My mother just went to um. Yeah. Okay. So. Um. Back to this. So answers to queries. Feel free to ask as many questions as you want, and I'm here to help. And you can also send them to um. The team as well. Uh, question walkthrough. So we'll go over as many questions as possible within the time frame. So I'll hopefully run over the, the specimen paper. Uh, okay, so 
the B minor. It's one of the most interesting and important tests you'll ever take. I actually really liked it. It was my favorite test to actually take. Um, yeah, so this is something that I actually talk about my students. Just you must enjoy the journey, not just the destination, because people just be trying to get the high scores um, into the uh, um, to the test. So it's quite important for you guys to actually look at it. Um, you know, because some people just try to you know be obsessed with test scores and then just mess up the entire test because they haven't enjoyed the journey. Because the BMI is more of a puzzle rather than you know. And just a test. It's not like the UCAT where it's just like an IQ test. It's more about you know enjoying the questions, you know, trying to get filled the question and seeing what's the most efficient way to actually take the test. Okay, so some of you might be thinking, okay, but how do I register? So the beginning of the two-hour computer-based test this year, yes, it has been confirmed uh, by Cambridge Assessment. Um, and it compromises three sections as well. So it costs 61 quid for the UK students, uh, 90 quid. For those outside of the UK, but it is likely to be higher due to invigilation fees, uh, thanks to capitalism. Um, yeah, so, so for example, one of my friends actually paid 125 words to sit in London, uh, along with many of my students as well. So it's probably going to be higher unless you sit it within your own school, or even better, your school actually pays it for you. So we have three sections. Section one, which is critical thinking and problem solving, multiple choice questions. Section two, which is biology, chemistry, physics, and maths, multiple choice. Section three, which is essay writing. Uh, and that's about it. So you have three questions. One of them is philosophical, another one is science, another one is medical ethics. So the key dates. So um, if you want to um, look at, you know, dating costs, you can just go to the admissions test websites. This is the link. You can also find on Google, just Google BMAT um, dates and costs, and you'll find it. So to register, you, the registration already opens, um, closes uh, on the 15th of October, uh, which is also when the bursary applications close. So the registration has opened and it will close with the bursaries on the 15th of October. The test date will be on the 3rd of November of 2021. And the UCAS deadline is on the 15th of October of 2021 this year. You get the results on the 26th of November of 2021, uh, which is exactly 23 days, uh, or three, three weeks and three days after you, um, you set the BMAT. Uh, actually, universities of Washington, for example, Cambridge, they, um, they'll, they'll, take, they'll send you uh, invitations before you even get you the results. Uh, this happened last year. So one of my friends applied for what college was it? I believe that it was Fitzwilliam and he received an invitation uh, on the 19th. So it's colleges, they get your results a week before for some reason, which I'm not sure why, but that's just how it is. Um, and then you can get shortlisted up to March, 2021 for, for example, UCL because they send them in batches. So it's definitely something to consider as well. So these are the sections in the BMAT. So section one is thinking skills. So you have problem solving and critical thinking. You have the multiple choice questions. Uh, you have a few of them and you need to do them in an hour. Section two, you have a scientific knowledge and application. So it's free sciences and maths. And you have 27 questions for them. It takes 30 minutes. Okay, just, I just want to make a couple of comments here. Um, you have 27 multiple choice questions, but you have seven for chemistry seven for physics, seven for biology, and six for maths. So there's one less maths question compared to sciences. And you have the same number of critical thinking and problem solving questions. So you have 16 critical thinking and 16 problem solving questions. Uh, finally, we have the section three, which is the writing task. As I've said, we have philosophy, science, and then medical ethics. Uh, you have three question options and you just pick one of them. And that should take you 30 minutes, it includes the reading, the planning, and the writing. So it sounds easy, but it's a lot harder than you know, it sounds, I promise. Okay, so, so we have some key errors as well. So the first error is the timing. So um, start preparing as soon as possible. Um, it takes time to master the BMAT. Um, I have a lot of students that actually made a lot of errors with these. So uh, they start preparing very late, uh, like a week before the test, and then guess what? Unfortunately, they don't do as well on the BMAT as they would like. Um, you should also practice under time conditions as 
many students won't actually be familiar with, you know, the, the feel of the exam. They'll just know the questions, but then they run out of time because the BMAT is, while it's not the UCAT, it's just time pressure. It's still very time pressure, especially for section two. You must also dig deeper. So make sure that you learn all the contents in the section two, because there's nothing more horrible than not being able to just do the section two content because you, you don't just don't, haven't learned it. It's just a big thing. So make sure that you learn the section two some knowledge guides, and then make sure that you can not only know it, but can apply it because the questions aren't just uh, you knowing something, is you being able to, you know, for example, let's say that we have a question on, you know, kinetic energy, or for example, there was a, a derivation which I've made with my students. So for example, okay, so I'm going back to GM, but what is the equation for hydrostatic pressure? Let's see if all of you know this. This is one of the equations in the BMATS. I want to see how advanced some of you are at the moment. So guys, uh, what is the equation for hydrostatic pressure? Let's see. You don't get reading time, unfortunately. All the foot in it, um, yeah, so it's HPG, well done guys. So um, great job. So um, it's actually not P, it's actually a row, a few physics teachers would say. So pressure equals, you know, um, rho GH, which you know how I remember it personally. I say, so GPE or just E equals MGH. And this is just very similar. Like it's, you have the same G and H. So you just have to remember the density, which is density is rho equals mass over volume. Uh, so this is where it comes from. And then the energy, I'll just derive it. But essentially uh, you can actually uh, derive over equation. So for example, they can give you, I'll actually do the der derivation here. So, okay, so density equals mass over volume and pressure equals force over area. And for example, they can just say, okay, so force over area equals mass GH over volume. So they can essentially, you know, for example, they can quite literally do anything. So they can, they can give you force, they can give you the area, the mass, with the gravitational constant and the height and ask you to calculate the volume. Uh, but most people won't be um, able to spot these equations straight away. So it's very important that you are able to actually um, to do this quite rapidly because most people will struggle with the time given. So it's definitely something to remember, which also comes in with our exam techniques as well. So um, most people won't actually have exam techniques. So they'll just go in and just do questions as a kind of question one, question two, question three, question four, et cetera. Uh, skipping is fine, guys. Don't be ashamed just because you can't do one question because um, the exam is actually written in a way that uh, most people just don't have enough time to finish the entire paper. So make sure you skip the hard questions and do the easy ones because that's how you get you know, top marks. Uh, if a question takes too long to guess, then just guess and move on. That's literally it. Like, if, you, if, you if you can't get an answer and if you can't eyeball it, guess and move on. Because it's, as I say, it's easier and better to get free marks from easy questions than to listen to your ego and just get one mark from a hard question. Um, because you know you run out of time if you just spend all the time in one question you can't solve. So there's something I will tell to my students is don't be a hero. And they are here, they all, they all agree with me, is that don't be a hero. Don't try to show off that you can do the hard questions when you can't get, you know, the easy ones correct within the time frame because they're not looking, every question is marked in the same way. Like every, every question is a mark. It doesn't matter how hard or easy it is. So make sure that you are smart and do the easy ones. That's how I recommend it. Okay, so um, also use the Q&A function, ask your questions and vote for the ones you want to be answered because I'll be answering them very soon as well. Um, signal resources, I recommend you guys using them. Make sure to make the most out of them. Um, and there's, I'll, I'll go over the, the practice questions very soon, but I'm just, I'm just walking through this. So, uh, how can six minutes or myself in this case help you? So I'll be making a YouTube channel and you can also check my subreddits. That's the first one they can look at, uh, attending the six minute surgeries. I promise that they'll get a lot more intense as time goes on. You can also check the six minute social media. So the WhatsApp group, I'm very active there, um, due to my messed up sleeping schedule. So. 
the team will be online in the morning. I'll be online at, from like 1 a.m. onwards. So yeah, uh, same as Discord means Sebastian. Hi, Sebastian. Um, and then the main page as well. So for example, there's the free resources. There's the um, tips by Ali Abdal uh, within the free resource section. Uh, if you want to invest, I mean, because it's your future, uh, investing in education is always a wise decision. Um, BMAT books, they are pretty decent. Some of them, I actually use every single resource on the market. So I, I should have brought them here, but so I have, I've used a 700 question book. I've used the new Future Doctors uh, Academy, the 1,200 question book from 2020 and 2021, 2021. I've used Kaplan, I've used Medic Mentor, I've used Medic Minds, Blackstone's Tutors, um, Oxford Applications, Unit Admissions, uh, Medology, um, basically everything that you can think of, you know, Blue Peanut Tutors, um, the MSAG, I've used it all. So if it exists, if it's on Amazon, if it exists, Martin has used it. So if you guys want some honest and unbiased you know, opinions, like my own, my own opinions on which ones are the best ones, you can always DM me on WhatsApp or Discord. Um, you can reach out to me at the chat, or you can just email team at six meds and they'll probably forward the question to me as well. You at Ninja, I won't be using it today, but I'll be using it for future sessions. You at Ninja is um, a pretty nice tool. Um, it actually really reminds me of um, the test format of you know, because the BMA is going to be online, so I recommend that all of you have that online test experience. I think it's personally, um, I have worked for Medify uh, before, and while I'm not supposed to be, uh, well, I'm not really bashing the company, just I'm just giving my own personal opinion on bias. I think that being at Ninja is a bit better than Medify in terms of you know, the it's a bit smooth in terms of the platform and the questions are a bit more up to date. Whereas Medify mostly has IMAP questions and which can be found for free. So I don't see why should, people should pay it. That's just how I see it. Now, why pay for something that is free? That's how I see it. But that's my views and not views of SIGMED or anyone else. So you can also find the BMAP masterclasses. I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I actually love it, especially section one. Hadeep, if you ever watch this, you did an amazing job. I absolutely love them. Uh, section two could be a bit better. They can include the content, which we'll cover in the master classes, anyways. But for section one, the tips are amazing. It's complete. Um, it's everything you have to know for section one. If you watch uh, and you actually practice and listen to Hadeep, I would say you can get a very decent school and reach your um, your dream medical school. Well, um, if you want something a bit more, let's say you're a bit of a higher end student, you are you have the type of parents that will just splash money and everything then you might want to go for courses, tuition, and maybe to be a bundle for six months, uh, depending on you know, what you look for. Um, there's unit admissions. I personally used them last year. They were pretty nice. I actually had a, a mentor, which was a, a legend. I, I actually love that guy. Um, he helped me with all my personal statements, and we even did a bit of BMAT. Um, in terms of BMAT, I kind of use every company, so I can't say which one helped me the most because I use them for different purposes. So. Some of them were better for section one, some of them were better for section two, some of them were better for the essays. And I just use them and combine them. Um, if you'd like proof, feel free to ask me what some I've seen a picture of the resources that I just have. I have them uh, on my desk, on my workshop over there. Um, if you want to see someone buys reviews of companies in terms of you know which one has the most up-to-date resources, which one has the, um, the most high quality questions, you can check out my subreddit because I give um, unbiased uh, reviews well, along with Leeds, Leeds Medics. So it's not just me writing reviews. I actually reviewed six meds before I joined the team. So you guys missed my six, six med there and it's completely unbiased. It's my own opinions. You guys can read them. I have, I'm very impartial because the way I see it is, um, I don't think that um, I should be promoting something if I would not recommend it to my own students. So I'm really impartial in terms of reviews. And if you guys want some, you know, Complete honest reviews on any resources. You guys are welcome to check my subreddits. You can also check, um, if it's not there, you can ask in WhatsApp and I'll just tell you what I think of them. Um, but yeah, some of them are a bit bad. Some of them are too expensive. Some of them have, for example, some kids, some companies have better cheaters than others. Some companies then, some companies copy from each other. It's a mess. The, it's a very wild market personally, but yeah. Uh, 
how does it rank Sigmas up there for anyone wondering? I um, I also love my students who just use BMAT Ninja, um, specifically because of the, the feel and, well, the timer as well, because, you know, it's, they are also having that some sort of how you compare against everyone else. And I think just really useful, especially for, you know, because you can kind of tell where you are in terms of everyone else. It's perfect. I love it. Okay, I'll be making more reviews soon as well, and you're more welcome to suggest future resources. So if it's not there, please let me know. What a bad arrow. And that's about it. All right, so I'll use the Q&A and also be going over some questions as well. So um, feel free to just use the Q&A. Uh, I'll just take like a five minute break to answer questions and I'll go back to answering a bit more, you know, answer a bit more questions. So I'll do questions now, practice questions, and then Q&A again. So yeah, use a Q&A function and just say what you want to be answered. I'll, I'll basically answer them as, as I can, basically. Okay, Zoom. Okay, Q&A, 28, wow. Oops, okay, so how hard it is to get uh, a seven in section one, two? Um, this is quite hard, I'll tell you why. So uh, it's about 29 out of 32, which is about 85%. Yeah, 85% is about correct. 85 to 90 percent is what you need for a seven in section one, and about you know 80 percent in section two as well to get a seven. So it's quite hard. Um, but with the appropriate mentoring, the appropriate people helping you, you always do well. Um, if, if, if you need some more clarification, please send another question and I'll expand. How do you join the WhatsApp group chat? So you actually um, go to six minutes, so you actually go to sixmed.co.uk website and you scroll down you'll find the whatsapp uh, logo there um sebastian if you can do me a favor you can just send the whatsapp link on the chat so that might be helpful as well uh if you want to join the whatsapp group chat the second one as the first one is full okay so how long will it take to community for the bmats and the ucats um okay guys i'll tell you what i've been doing with my students and then i'll tell you what the average is so I started teaching people for the BMATs in July. So the 1st of July was when we started preparing for the BMATs. No, that is not the average. That is like your, um, your exceptional students. Those are the students I've been working with since July. Um, they are here, though they, all, they won't let me die. They, they know we've been working for a couple of months already. Uh, the average person spends about six weeks, I would say. Um, and about six or eight weeks on the account. That is your average. But some people spend less time, some people spend more time. It's not about how much time you spend, you guys. It is not about, because I know people that have been, for that. I know one person that spent a year, yes, a whole 12 months, 365 days, preparing for the BMAT. Guess what score they got uh, on the chat, please? What score, the person preparing for a year, what score did they get? Yes, they got two fours and 2C, the essay. And this is it, they got rejected. Um, they're actually replaying this year, uh, which is unfortunate. But essentially, um, some people don't prepare, the people prepare for content, they don't prepare for techniques because the BMA is a skills exam. It's not about how much knowledge you have, it's skills. So critical thinking skills, how you apply knowledge. And people sometimes don't, they don't memorize the equations. It's, um, some people just can't prepare in an appropriate way. So like, it's not about how much time you spend, but how you use the time that you have. Because I covered section one in about six hours with my students. And then they, they, they've been getting sevens, eights and nines in section one. Uh, whereas some people have been saying, you know, they've done entire question banks, you know, 5,000 questions. And they've been getting five and sixes. So, um, you know, it's um, just something to bear in mind is that it's, it's about how you spend your time, not how much time you put into it. Since the beginning is online, do you think this will likely be more difficult or easier for us to do? I'll say it's both. First things. Okay, guys, this is something that I had technical issues with my own BMAPs. I had 28 out of 32 in my section one, so I got a 6.8. Um, the reason why I did not get a nine was because I had to skip four questions in my paper because of technical issues. I got I had a very dodgy laptop and the images would not load. 
I wasted loads of time reading. The images will not show up. They wouldn't look. So guys, please, if you're sitting the BMLs, bring your own laptop. Refuse to get your own school laptop because you are very likely to have technical issues and fail the test. It's just the reality. I won't sugarcoat it. Bring your own laptop. It's good. If you don't have your own laptop, you know, if you're doing it, for example, the MTS testing, which is where my students are sitting at, uh, they have their own, they have, they're like a natural test center. So the laptops and the computers are very good. Whereas if you're doing in your own school, for example, a, um, an underfunded state school, then please guys, bring your own laptop. You will not regret this. It will save you headaches. Um, for all of you wondering, no, you can't use Grammarly. You'll get disqualified. Please don't. Please uninstall Grammarly and all Chrome extensions before, you know, doing the BMAT. Best resources. Yeah, I'll go after this later because it's going to take ages. Um, I will do that. So, the how the exam was working online. So, I'll um in the next session, I'll be showing you a demonstration of how the software looks like. How how what you guys think because. I want to have an hour and I want to walk over some questions so you guys get a feel of how, how the exam looks like. Uh, in the next session, I'll be just showing you how you actually see the test in your own, you know, the BMAT because it's obviously going to be online. So it's not going to be as a PDF as I'm doing it today. So I'll do it on session two. So guys, make sure you come on session two because I'll walk over, you know, the their software. I don't remember what it's called. I think it's BTS surplus, BTS surplus. I think that is, uh, no, or BTL, not BTS. Oh dear, um, I, I can't believe we just popped BTS in a BMAT session, but I think it's BTL surplus, not BTS. Um, so yeah, okay, this is probably a bit late. Uh, I'll probably just throw my iPad now on this session as well. Oopsie, uh, but you, the image might be a bit distorted. Uh, sorry about that. I couldn't see the questions. Um, okay. Minimum time for prep to get um, sevens. Bro, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Some people that have looked them, I'll tell you, because, you know, I can't give you the average because I, what I am, you are people, have, people that have been preparing for such a lot are not average, but with my students, um, this is not with six minutes, but this is actually me uh, with myself, me, myself, and I. Uh, we've, we've had people getting sevens after six hours of work with section one, whereas other people took a bit longer and had 10 hours. Some people had 100 hours. It just depends. Uh, I think the average is about 30 hours. Uh, unless the good man just has already did the research for you because. The worst thing about the beam is you have to learn the content. You have to find what works and what doesn't. Whereas if you have a mentor, then you are able to um, find out what works and what doesn't straight away because they've done that research for you. So, yeah, is it what you've been taught? It's that con you. That is what courses and mentors are for. It's for, um, you know. Okay. Okay, sure. Uh, can you hear me back? Speak a bit louder. Okay, so um, I'll say about, um, you know, I'll say the average is about three hours. Some people that I've worked with took six. I've seen people on Discord needing a hundred. Some people can't even get sevens. So it depends on individuals. Okay. Um, I'll not allow questions to be asked. It doesn't have that function, unfortunately. Um, where did I apply? Okay, so I applied for uh, Oxford, Imperial, UCL, uh, uh, two offers. I won't tell you which ones because I don't think that, I don't think it matters. Like the quality of my advice does not depend on what uni I'm going for. Sure, I could be plugging my uni and just be using appealing to authority, just, you know, this is a flaw, by the way, appealing to authority, um, a logical flaw. Like I could be using my uni's name to, get more credibility, but I don't think that is the right way to go about it. I want you guys to trust my advice based on the quality and the tables. Then me uh, left, right, and center. Uh, you can, oops, you can take your laptops in your school. You just double check with your school because sometimes they might, they might say no. 
uh, I had sixes in my BMATs. Um, okay, so um, the Discord server, oh wait, one second, is it bad? Okay, guys, one sec. I'm going to the um, check to Hello, guys. Can you hear me now? I just moved to another room. This one is a bit closer to um, Wi Fi. So is it better now? Sorry about that, lads. Um, I just moved to a second room. I'm so sorry about this. I just did not realize. Okay, so which VM prep sites are recommended? Um, the, the official Cambridge Assessment website is a great website. Um, you can also have, you know, the other companies ones. It depends on what you need. Because, for example, if someone struggled with essays, I would recommend a specific resource. Whereas if someone struggled with, you know, section one, I'll teach something else. So it depends on what exactly you need. Uh, Discord server, it's on the website. Uh, if you ask Sebastian on the chat, he might be able to send it to you. Um, I'll probably just like at the end, I'll probably just like plug the group chats um, at the end. Okay, so best resources to use for up prep. Um, so past papers, it depends. Do you want free resources or do you want free resources? It depends on your budget as well, because you know, I can give resources for literally quite literally any budget from free to paid to high cost. Uh, if you want more like tailored advice, then you can always mention WhatsApp or on the six minute group chat. As we're going to have a bit, bit more than an hour, I'm always free to answer any questions. And you get paper to work with the BMAT YouTube channel. I'll plug that YouTube channel at the end of the session as well. Also, I'll plug it on the signal group chat. So if you've missed a session, then you can go back and see it. Okay, you get paper, you just ask and I'll give it to you. I've checked with Cambridge Assessments, they said you can have paper. Um, well, well, no comment. <laughs> okay, um, which company is best for essays? Um, that is a very good question actually. It depends. Do you mean essay reviews or do you mean like um, actually, like for example, structuring your essays? It depends because for I think for advice, I would say that um, hmm. I'll probably have to get back on you on this one. Okay. Uh, biggest tips reflection one problem solving. Literally just practice, practice, and practice. And this is very cliche. So first things first, learn your values. So um Okay, be out for, for Doctors Academy. I'll just go back to this one. But so I said this question is very interesting. I do not recommend it. I have the book right there, on, literally on my uh, pile of books, but I don't recommend it for, for a specific reason. The question for section two are A level. They do not, the, the book was written by year 13. It was not written by an actual specialist. It was written by someone that just barely took the, the BMAT and does not know a single thing about the BMAT. So I do not recommend, personally, I, don't, I would not recommend this to my students. I told, if there was one resource I told my students to stay away from was that book. I said, guys, don't use Kaplan, don't use Medify, don't use uh, Doctors Academy for the BMAT. You're going to waste money. It's not worth it. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so someone says that they had a problem with the training temple. Uh, the page, please email team at sixmed.co.uk and they'll sort that out for you as I can't do anything as it's not my area, unfortunately. Uh, okay, good. Be my motivation skills. So think about this. This, guys, is your, um, it's like it's like the last push. So basically, it's the last thing you have to do. Like you do the BMATs and then you might even get into a dream medical school. Like for you that want to go into Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial, UCL, like all those big name schools. This is the last hurdle. If you, if you do this and you get a great score, even if you mess up the interview a little bit, you can still compensate for the BMATs. Your BMATs can quite literally give you an offer if it's a great score. Like I know someone who got a full scholarship for Cambridge. Like I do know myself, like he's my friend. The person got a full scholarship uh, from Cambridge because I had two nines in the BMATs. And this is quite real. 
um, that have a false cost. So it covers tuition fees, covers accommodation. So like, if you even get a really high school, you might even get scholarships. So like, think of the advantages. You can possibly be a tutor, you know, you can get your own, you know, it depends on if you want to tutor people, like there's, there are many possibilities. Like high school opens not only um, medical schools, you know, possibilities, but also gives you some professional life, you know, opportunity as well. Okay, nice. So it depends. What, what do you mean it's accessible to us? You mean like the paid resources? You mean the free resources? Uh, I'll say from nines, it's not about. Firstly, I'll, I'll tell you guys what a nine looks like because I actually taught someone last year and I had a nine, uh, which was actually really amazing. Um, they had a nine in section one. Uh, section two was a bit lower, but they had a nine in section one. And it was because. Um, First thing first, they know the strategies. Like they have sets, like they approach questions in a systematic approach. And I'll show you, actually I'll just do it now actually. And we can go back to the Q&A. Um, let's go to good notes. So for example, so this is the specimen paper for, so this is the specimen paper. So if you if you want to do this, maybe you ignore this, but let me just make a question for example. Okay, so uh, can someone just say a random number? And I'll do that question, pick one to 32. Numbers one to 32. Okay, I'll see the first person that said something, 23. Okay, 23, great. Let's see what it is. Okay, so, um, the first thing says, you always read the question. By the way, you always ignore this. I always ignore this because it's just wasting your time. So it's about which one most weakens the arguments. So you have to find a conclusion. So more than, Industrialized countries use far greater quantities per heads of metals, water, petroleum, coal, and wood products than developing countries. Much of it is actually being important from the developing countries. This is a natural consequence of the higher standards of living in the present day industrialized countries. Even assuming that the population of developing countries remains fixed, present levels, it follows that if the standard of living in these countries is to reach uh, those of present day industrialized countries, a considerable increase in production and hence considerably higher consumption of resources will be unavoidable. So what we have to find a conclusion here, um, and some of you might still not be familiar with this, but the conclusion is basically the statement that sums up the entire arguments. So for example, some of you might have seen this, uh, I'll probably need some space, I'll probably just do it here. Okay, no question 24, but for example, if a, so plat is a mortal, plateau, is immortal. And all men are mortal. So what is the conclusion, guys? What do you think? I'll give you five seconds. So the conclusion is Plato. Oh, actually, I feel like it's actually all mortal men uh, for it to follow. Mm, yeah, because you know, if it's because you know, yeah, all mortal men. I'm just, um, just if you want to do things right, we do in this example. So, all mortal are men. Therefore, Plato is a man. So, like, can you see this is a conclusion? So, like, you have a statement that gives you some information, a second statement which gives you something else, and these two statements, these two statements have a link. Uh, and this statement here sums up the entire arguments. That is what a um, like a like a conclusion is. It's basically use the premises, which is like a statement that is towards a conclusion, and you find the conclusion. So let's look at this here. So um, okay, so the conclusion here I would say would be it follows that um, it will be from here to here. So it follows that. So there's actually also like, is like a conclusion indicator. So it's just it follows that. If the standards of living in these countries is to reach the, those of present day, then there's going to be an increase in production and hence a more, more a high consumption of resources. So, and then they'll just walk over like all these options here. And then they'll just look at which one actually um, attacks conclusions, for example, um, in weakening questions, if you attach one of these um, to the arguments, the argument will kind of break down. It won't make sense. And that is the exact point of you know, weakening conclusions. So 
Uh, the population of developed countries is likely to increase substantially over the next decade. Um, hmm. I'll say it's not really relevant. It's not really attacking, you know, the, um, because it's saying here that uh, there's a higher standard of living and then, okay, so this here is not really relevant here. Like all this is kind of wasting your time. I would say that this is actually really random. So the actual argument is literally just this. So this is this. the natural consequence of the high general standard of living in present day in the West. Well, even assuming that the population of the developing countries remains fixed at present levels, at present levels, follows that the standard of living in these countries is to reach uh, those of present day. So it doesn't quite, doesn't quite attack the um, conclusion and I'll go over why because I'm just I'm not really here to cover any strategies but I'm just giving guys a rough idea of how to approach it so you would look for the conclusion find the premises and then you use look for which um, weakening question you would um, you would essentially do. for example let's go for section D for example let's say you have section two um, I'll pick just a little one first I'll just pick uh, what I'll pick something that's actually not very Pass. Okay, so for example, here you would you would kind of uh, look at the answer straight away. That the choice is okay. So K okay, kinetic energy. So it's twice, twice, four times, and four times. So K E equals a half mv squared. And then you just look at the information. So velocity of A of P is going to be ten. Velocity of Q is going to be twenty. So it's going to be twice two two times higher. So it's going to be just let's make this x and let's make this 2x because if x equals 10 then 2x equals 20. so it follows that if you make v 2x then there's going to be um v squared so it's going to be 2x so 4x squared so it's going to be four times higher and that's just kind of how it works and then you do the same for gp so like it's more about being systematic with you know, questions it's not really about how you know the content but being systematic you know just ignoring trying to find what's relevant within the question so for, you see i didn't really read this i just couldn't i just knew it was going to be relevant i went straight for this and i went straight for this i read twice twice four times four times and then i just saw that there was a the, the speed 10 20 and then they just keep going with it so it's more about being systematic rather than you know you know um keep going with it Okay, and the format of the VMAT, it's gonna be the same format. You'll have to type the essay out. Don't use Grammarly unless you want to be disqualified because last year, I believe there was about hundred people that used Grammarly and they lost the, they got the test cancels. So it's please, please, please don't use Grammarly. Only install it, anything that helps you with spell checking because your test will get canceled because they record the screen and they will watch it if there's any concerns. Um, yeah, so. Bigger steps as we began. So basically, like practice. And um, okay, so how do you get nines? It's more about like looking at strategies. I I I, put, I didn't really try to go over the question because I wanted to do those questions later, um, within the, the the future papers, like section session one, we go over, um, you know, critical thinking and problem solving. I was thinking of more actually just doing the entire paper. I think that'd be more useful. What do you guys think? Do you guys want me to do that? Uh, in the next session. Do you guys just want me to walk over an entire paper? Do you think that would be useful? Or do you prefer to just tell me the tips? Okay, there we go. For the next session, I'll just discuss with the team, but uh, I was thinking of just using that entire hour just to walk over and hopefully get nine, fingers crossed, um, in that paper. So you guys just can see how fast I approach those questions. Yeah, they're free. Uh, they're like the six minute surgeries. Literally six minute surgeries. So session two, just short next session. And I'll just discuss with the team if it's feasible. We might even do an BMAT Ninja, it's available. And then I'll walk over the paper if you guys want. Okay, so how many pre recorded Imperial questions? Uh, okay. They were fine, actually. I feel like it's a bit more random because it's, I think it's a bit awkward. You know, like, has, okay, who here has ever applied for a job and had online interviews? Because I had once uh, back in year 12. And it was just so awkward. Like it was just me, like talking to a camera, and then once you finish it, they give you, like a, there's a time on the screen. It's just very intimidating. Oh, that is a banger! I love that. I love that place. 
Oh, that is actually so good. What a ledge. Um, yeah, basically, um, it's really awkward. Like, I was just talking to them, and yeah, it was it was I thought it was a bit intimidating in some aspects. I didn't really like it, but they were like your average MMA questions. They weren't well. How do I say this? They weren't just like specialized. They were just like very generic questions. So, for example, what what was it? Well, yeah, I can't say them. Yeah, I can't say them. Yeah, I can't say them because they were not allowed to say your interview questions. Uh, at least for now, and the the, the, the mission cycle is just not over yet. Really. Well, yeah, because I haven't started, so I can't just say it just yet. Um, the unis, I basically just said that I think that there's no point in me um, using my uni, uh, some sort of plug to back up my points. I don't think there's a point in that. So I'll use that later. The amount of scoring works. Okay, great question. So it's scored from one to nine. Uh, this is going to over a little bit, but I'm going to sit here until people don't have any more questions. Okay, so. How does the scoring actually work? So basically it's one to nine. Um, nine is like exceptional. Around 10 people in the world get nine. Uh, but basically no one gets a one as well. It's quite terrible. So nine is the highest. And then it can follow some sort of bell distribution, uh, which I might even just highlight on the screen here. Uh, I'll just go to a blank page. So I can just, so basically like you have the, the scores and then they will just decrease again. So it's like some sort of like, it's quite skewed to like the, um, the left. So it's got some sort of like distribution like this. And then your scores will just, you know, these, so this would probably be like a 4.8. This would be like a 6.2. This would be a nine. This would be like a 2.2 uh, something like that. So as you can see, most candidates score within a um, 5.8. Actually, most candidates, they would score within a, a 4.2. And there's 5.6. This is like your, your within your standard deviations. So I'd say about 67% of candidates they get these scores. This is like an estimate. There's not it varies between every year. But this sounds like a, a very plausible 5.8, actually. 5.8. Uh, this is your, your average. Um, like most candidates score within these areas. 6.3 is like an exceptional candidate. Sevens and eight and nines. It's for the, the the big brain people, or it's not for the geniuses, because some people feel like, oh yeah, I'm not too smart to get nine. That is not true. The, thing, the reason that people get nines is because they know something that you don't. That is all about it. People that get nines, they um, they know something that other candidates don't know, and that's how they get the highest scores. I've talked to many people that got nines. They are they have specific strategies for each type of question. They've done their, their homework and they know exactly how to prepare. Also, guys, um, I was going to talk about this for the next session, but there are actually some tests I recommend you guys doing. Just not so you know how the BMAT. So the BMAT has limited pass papers. So this is what I would recommend. So BMAT from 2003 to 2020, you have natural sciences mission tests from 2016 to 2020. Do them for section one. Parts, parts A to D, because these are harder. NSAA is harder. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, oops. Um, so, natural science admissions test uh, is harder than. Section two for the BMAT. Yeah, so this is the hardest one for BMAT section two. For um, for section one, if you guys want to do harder questions than the BMATs and you don't want to buy books, you should go for the TSA past papers. So TSA, 2000 and whatever, I think it's 2003, when it, 2008 when it launched. Something like around these lines until 2020. Do it for TSA Oxford. Uh, please look for TS, TSA Oxford, guys. It's the most. TSA Oxford, section one. Do it for this. Uh, also, um, outside of the Yanga, 
for section three. Uh, has better questions so for physical maths for section two. Don't do section one because section one is exactly the same as the NSAA. So we'll do it for physics and maths. Uh, so yeah, we have these. We also have other papers which I recommend doing um, because I don't think books are that helpful personally in terms of questions. So you can do the um, IMAT class papers. Uh, you can do the ECA for section one, part A. Uh, you also have, I think it's about it. Uh, there's also this nice paper which I recommend, which is the, um, if any of you are from Wales, you probably know about this, but so the double GC, GCSE, numeracy, non calculated papers. Why is it J? Double JC, not J. Double JC, GCC numeracy, uh, paper one, non paper one, high paper. And do the free markers because those are like, do them in like a minute. Like, so they do free markers in a minute. I'll say that those are like very similar to problem solving in the BMATs. And then for session three, yeah, we'll go over this like in a lot more depth. And I'll actually walk over question instead of me just like telling you. But, you know, for section three, I'll say that, you know, you can do these papers and you can also do the TSA Oxford for section two if you run out of questions because they are great. So, yeah, that's about it uh, for that. Um, okay, BMAT scoring uh, has been answered. You have time to attempt each question, uh, but most people won't because most people are very bad with time management. Section two, I think, is like really hard to complete the paper, but you have time, you have enough time. But most people, unfortunately, they, they can't manage their time efficiently because they'll spend too much time on one question and then, you know, it's impossible. But you have you, you technically have enough time for all questions. But most people either they'll focus on a weakness and then they'll lose like a lot of time or you know they'll just be stubborn so don't be stubborn guys don't be a hero that's what i recommend uh um free was free or cheap resources i'll say a level notes like if you have a cheesy you have your gcc guides from like year 11 like use your G gcc science guides because they'll be quite helpful to revise but I would say the session two system knowledge guides is more than that. Or, hear me out, if you have the people that have the old section two system knowledge guides, there was, a, there was to be a BMAT um, CGP guides, which was disqualified in 20, 2018. So unfortunately, we don't have that anymore. But if you know anyone that has it, then ask them for it because it's great. Next webinar, uh, it's going to be on Sunday. So it's going to be next Sunday where I'll actually walk over questions. This one, I didn't feel like walking over the, the the weekend question because then I'll have to, you know, I won't have the, the full hour straight to do the paper. So yeah, my favorite BMAT thing, critical thinking, I love it because it really makes me think a lot, pun not intended, but um, I just feel like the thinking behind it. It's just really nice. Um, like there's a lot, it feels like a puzzle. Like you kind of, you have to find a conclusion and then you look for what works, what doesn't. I think it's just like very systematic and I love it. It's very easy to master. And once you master that, it's easy marks. Um, okay, this has been answered. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, BMAP for foreigners, I'll definitely walk over that. Um, okay, let me just take the chat for a sec because there are a couple of questions in the chat and I'll just uh, see if there's any questions here. Okay, so, okay, this code invites has been sent, thank you. Uh, sorry about the connection has been sorted now. Yeah, Plato is not Plato. Plato is a man. Uh, um, recording will be put up on the SixMed website, so it's sixmed.co.uk. Uh, sorry, guys. One sec. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, my cat is being a bit noisy today. Bless him. Uh, YouTube channel will be plugged at the end. The tests are identical, so I'd say that the the, for the TSA, it's quite similar in terms of, you know, like, uh, it's quite similar to the, to the BMAT section one. Uh, problem solving is a bit easier, but critical thing is harder. Um, 
you, you don't get printed copy. You just get the, the thing on the, the computer. It's a bit annoying, but yeah. Um, well, you, you only have, you, you have like a set time, but if you mean in terms of preparation, I would say spend about, you know, um, this is for raw strategy. I'd say spend about 40 hours in section one, 40 hours in section two, and 20 hours in section three is what I would recommend to people. Uh, for your average candidate. Some people spend way more. Some people spend way less. It depends on, you know, the people doing it. Um, okay, someone asks, is the tuition worth it? Is the question. The thing is, I'll be honest with you guys. I had a BMAT tutor last year. I had to actually. And I also did zero gravity, so that's free. Um, it's like a lottery. Sometimes you have amazing tutors. Sometimes you have bad tutors. So it depends on your luck. And I'm being completely honest here. Like, I had one tutor from Oxford Applications. The guy was horrible, uh, to say the very least. Um, most of the sessions were actually spent on him just telling me how, you know, he was just telling me how he could easily do A level papers in 10 minutes and get full marks. And I was like, that's mad, bro, but I'm here to do B maths. So, um, like, you know, the tutors in literally all companies, like, I think it's a bit of a lottery, but say some companies have better tutors than others. For example, six men that need admissions from my field, they have great tutors. Uh, obviously, you can, you can get unlucky, happens to everyone, but I'd say on the, the average, I'll say six men that need admissions, especially need admissions, guys. If you can afford the admissions, please use them. I love those guys. Uh, my, my mentor was amazing. Like, I even, I even sent them emails today, like, thank you again. Like, that's how much, like, even, like, months after, I just said, thank you, man, you're a legend. Um, I even talked to them, so, like, yeah, guys, I recommend it. Make sure that, you know. Uh, I'm just, like, running. I'm picking the, the fastest questions, and I'll get uh, to the other questions. Uh, unit missions for the person on the chat. Um, okay, so, BMAS for Americans. So, are you are you doing that? Okay, I, I also have a lot of expertise within your assessment. So, are you applying for college boards? So, are you doing the are you doing the the APs, the advanced placements, or are you doing the SAT or the ACT? So, are you doing the ACT, the SAT, uh, with you know general or the the subject? No, the subject has got uh, cancelled, I think. So, are you doing the advanced placements? What are you doing? So, for my American friend here, so what are you doing? APs, yeah, new admissions. That's what it's called. Yeah, the segment tutors are great. You can't draw on a digital digital test, unfortunately. You, I think it's only uh, laptops uh, that you can use. So using APs, okay. So the APs are pretty much the same as, you know, they're a bit hard in GCC. So you would need to um, walk over your uh, AP. So look at the Khan Academy. So you use Khan Academy over the US. I know it's quite free over there. You can use Khan Academy to revise the contents. You can use a section to some knowledge guides. Uh, but bear in mind that there are bits different. Uh, I'd say, yeah, 80% is, uh, it's a bit rough. Yeah, BMAT Ninja uh, for BMAT, I'd say it's great, use it. Uh, okay, so for APs, um, there's quite one thing I wanted to talk about. You use Khan Academy, as I said, and you use the section to its knowledge guide, but bear in mind that in the US, the tests are a bit easier. Like the, the tests in the UK are a lot harder. So A-levels, we have, our tests are a lot harder. So the, the difficulty of the, the BMAT is actually A-level. So you look at the BMAT questions, there are A-level questions, but with GCC knowledge. So they're as hard as A-level questions, but you know, you just, they won't have to, like if you look at the physics question, for example, uh, or even the, the math questions, you would rarely get something like that in GCC. Uh, or maybe like the nine questions, whereas in the BMAT, you have all the hard questions, uh, which would see in A levels. So it's, it's, it's GCC, but it isn't because it's GCC for every single example. So it's um, okay. Uh, okay, so Medifact or BMATs don't use it. ISC 700 don't use it. It's very outdated. Medify, they've been trying to update the question bank, but I'll say they're not quite there yet because. Uh, they're not exactly hire the most qualified people coming from an ex worker. Uh, yeah, BMAT Ninja is probably the best out of the three. Um, okay, so the CGP guide was disqualified because 
cost them too much money. They're basically like trying to save cash. Yeah, the not for foreigners, basically um, you have to sit at the um, Cambridge Assessment Test Center. I recommend, if you're from you know the Netherlands, uh, there's also a dictionary uh, which you can use. Uh, it's on the Cambridge Assessment website from Dutch to English for the terminology. I don't think it has that for Malay and you know in Singapore as well. Or I think it's Cantonese. Um, no, it's Mandarin. I think it's Mandarin. Uh, so yeah, like in Singapore, you also don't you don't have the dictionary, so you'd have to look into that. But you don't. It's, it's the exact same as the BMAT in other countries. You basically set the BMAT at different time zones. So for example, I would set the BMAT at you know, um, whatever time, so 9 a.m. in UK time. People in the, in the Caribbean will be setting that test at 7 p.m. from here. So like people set the, the BMAT at different times. So guys, please, when you set your test, be careful so you don't actually give your advantage, uh, give your um, competitors an advantage because they will know the questions. So once you discuss the BMAT, there is an embargo, which means that you can't discuss the paper for a full day. So be careful with that. Score for Oxbridge, sixes. Is your CIS score if you're international, you need sevens. So, home students, so if you're a home student, you need 6.2s. If you are an international student, you need sevens. If you're from wedding at participation, I would say 5.8 would be enough. Um, if you, if you can do five, um, okay, I'll okay. So, someone's asking about my asset structures. I'll, I'll cover that in the asset structure because I don't feel like if I cover everything today, then what is the point of people showing up to feed sessions? So I'm going to be giving like an overview. I'm, I'm giving like answering the general questions. And then in the future sessions, and I'll go over like, you know, a bit like I'll actually answer questions. And this one, I don't feel like answering any questions because they're just an introduction. I want you guys to give, give, give you guys a feel of, you know, of what the VMI is like, answer any questions you might have. So no strategies. That's why I didn't even answer the weaknesses question. Um, I just think I just don't think it's worth it because I will answer it again in the next session. So I don't think like there's a point in doing that. Um, okay. Okay. So I actually have a spreadsheet with these. Uh, so I actually analyzed every single question in the BMATs in, in a lot of detail. So I looked at the topic and subtopic. And basically, the, the most the most uh, tested topic was the physics. I I'm not sure. I think it was 36 times electricity came up, and 28 times for waves, and 22 times for radioactivity. Since 2003, from 2003 to 2019, it was electricity, then waves, then radioactivity. So those are the most tested topics. Yeah, lots of people get a nine. I'd say about 10 every year get a nine. Um, time mocks, I would say uh, do two weeks of like preparation with uh, on time mocks and stuff, and then do four weeks of, you know, straightaway timing. But I feel like it, even from the start, it's not, it do, it's not, it does, it's not harmful. I would say from the start, maybe if you're feeling a bit brave, so you can get a, um, a rough idea from the start. Okay, so. I did, uh, no, I'm not saying matter. Okay, I, I, I say about two hours per day. Two hours per day sounds very sustainable. You can also do your uh, personal statements, your interviews, perhaps. So it's, I'd say it's two hours a day. It's reasonable, and the, you 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 increase that um, in like one to two weeks before the BMAT. So I know some people did like eight hours uh, within the half term after the BMAT. So yeah, if you want to do that, be my guest. A good score, I'd say it depends. A good score for Lancaster, I'd say low fives. For Cambridge, uh, a high six. It depends. Like, for example, if you're playing for the, um, what is it, Univ University University of Malay, uh, which is University of Malaysia, I'm pretty sure Dean is sixes for that uni. So just bear in mind, like, it depends on what uni it is because, but a good score is a five, but it depends. Some unis, for some unis, that is not enough. So for some unis, that it's too high, well, not too high, but it's great. It depends on what uni it is, really. Um, an, an average good score and an average high score. An average good score is like a 5.4 or 5.8. And an average high score is like a 6.8. I'll say those in my, like, is my opinion. So yeah, APs. Uh, yeah, I actually did my, I started to prepare for my BMAT like 
within two years before my test. So like, it was uh, I was a bit of a try hard, but I enjoyed that because I just I just went home and just did like twenty minutes of B mount, like question or two a day. Did it like st- straight away for two years. I got a pretty decent score, and now here I am. Um, how many questions you say? What do you mean, like in, in the test? So in the, in the in the test center in the B itself, you have seven questions for chemistry and seven questions for biology in section two. But if you if you talk about in terms of how many questions you do, bro, can do a hundred, do a thousand, do how many you want, as long as you're confident and you can apply the knowledge, that's what matters. Like quality over quantity is what I will recommend because some people will burn out, so be careful of that as well. What's up, group chats full? I think Sebastian said in a second group chats. Uh, if it's not, if it's already full again, just let me know and I'll just sort that out before I leave the session. And then I think there's a third group chat now, uh, which can be sent. Um, someone said that they bought the training session on BMAT Ninja and it said it hasn't bought it. Contact BMAT Ninja, uh, the team. On, so team at sixmed.co.uk, they'll help you. Yeah, really, really, really helps. So uh, I'd say Gillick's competence, um, you know, Charlie Gard's case are some of the many that I would recommend. There's more, but more of that in future sessions. Medify for BMAT because I can't, oh, I have a, yeah, I have a non-disclosure agreement, guys, I can't say it. Uh, I signed basically a contract which says I can't disclose some of the things that I've seen, but just trust me, guys. Uh, yeah, I can't say it. I can't say exactly what I've seen, but it's not pretty. Um, I'd say that UCL interviews are harder, personally, because this panel puts you a bit on the spot, but it depends on, it depends on the hard. What is hard for you? Do you mean hard? Do you, think, do, you think, do you find, like, holding a conversation with an interviewer for, like, an hour, half an hour hard? Because if, then that may be hard for you. But in MMIs, which has the ones in Imperial, I think it might be easier if you are the kind of person that, you know, you've messed up once, no worries at all. You have more chances in the presentation. So if you if you mess up in one interview in UCL, that's it, bro. That's it. Whereas if you mess up one interview at Imperial, that's not the end of the world. You have more chances to make up for it. It's a new station, new person looking at it. Section two is like AS multiple choice keepers. Oh, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I would say. Like CIE, for example. So you know how you have the Cambridge International Examinations, the International A-level papers. Um, I'll say those people for, for multiple choice for chemistry and physics. I'll say that is very similar to what you get in the BMAT. So CIE, international A levels uh, for multiple choice papers. Okay, so if you do badly in the BMAT, you have to sit in the next application cycle. So for example, you have to take a gap year basically. So if you, if you mess up the BMAT, do it next year. It's a bit brutal, but same as the UK, you can't do it for. Okay. How much is a segment mentor? I'm actually not quite sure, but I'm pretty sure it's like 25 quid per hour. Uh, I think that is how much it costs for the six metentes. Sebastian, if you are here, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's 25 quid per hour. But just go on the six med websites, it's everything gonna be there for you. I'm just like the, the guy here that's just running some free sessions here. Okay, for leads, I would say it's a five. 5.2 is what I recommend for Leeds. I have friends from Leeds. If you want me to talk to them, I can get them. Um, okay, actually, if you join the, 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 my subreddit, um, so I have a subreddit, which is called r-bmyexam. We have a WhatsApp group with two Leeds medics. So if you join and just ask for Lily, uh, she's, a, she's like a, um, a medic from Leeds, ask her about it, and then she'll just reach out to you. So we have a Leeds medic on my team. So yeah, I would recommend that. Uh, but I'd say five point two is all right. UCL, I'd say you need like a six, like a low six for UCL. It's like just because you know the, you're international, uh, so obviously the, the higher the better. But I'd say a six should be all right. But I know someone that got rejected with the six point five from UCL last year. They were international from Malaysia, so I'd say six point five is maybe what you might want to get for, for this year because it's a bit wild nowadays. So I'd say. A 6.5, maybe 6.2, it depends on, because it varies a little bit year by year. But say 6.5, maybe 6.8, maybe 6.2 is, is all right for UCL as an as international, not as a home student. As a home, let's say 5.8 is fair enough, it's fine. Yeah, leads has been answered, the question for leads. Um, 
with your Alex question? I'm not sure what you mean. The Jesus seen the Alex question, so I'll please answer it. Please ask it again, but I'm not sure what you mean. Um, yeah, if you're international, you should aim for sevens realistically because this the, the thing is, what I'm, I'm not telling you the score that you need, I'm telling you the score that you, you apply and then you don't have to worry about it. Like, you're pretty much guaranteed an interview. So, sevens are pretty much guaranteed interviews. Uh, if you get sixes, then you might get rejected. So I'm just telling you this call that it's like a, a strong chance of getting shortlisted. I got I got I got high sixes with technical issues, so would have been higher. Fun fact, I'm actually saying the VMAT this year again because I'm I actually do tutoring with my students and basically they're going to set their tests in MTL in London, the, the test center. And I just for you know, let's just say it with them. So I'm just saving the BMAT this year for fun. Who does it? I don't know, but I do it. For Brighton, I have friends from Brighton. They got in with 5.2. So Brighton and Sussex Medical School, 5.2 in each section is a... Uh, I just, it's like for schools, but I'll just talk more about it later. Um, okay. WhatsApp link here or in the email. Okay, so uh, the, I'm gonna ask the team to send you guys an email to join the new WhatsApp group chat because so if you joined through the um, register for like the the six month newsletter, and then you, you're going to get the you know the, the link for it. I'll just ask Sebastian or whoever is doing Adi. I'll just ask him to send the link for the new chats. Um, from my field, like from my personal opinion, I, I personally haven't used a six month tuition, but from my field, from people from Discord, they say it was helpful. Uh, I didn't really have any complaints from people from my Discord server. So if you want to just pop in Discord and ask anyone if they've used that, some people probably have it on there, just ask and they'll just give you their opinions. Don't just take it from me because I, I work with SixMed. So obviously I'll say good stuff about SixMed, but I generally think it's great. It's a great company, which is why they decided to join uh, because I think it's one of the best companies out there in terms of teaching because they've mastered uh, teaching, you know, they've mastered teaching the basics. I really like it because most people will literally do quite well if they listen to six minutes. So I really enjoy it. Plus, uh, how deep was really nice as well. So, you know, look at this, the BMAT, six minute master classes for BMAT is great. I really enjoy it personally. I'm not saying this is like a six minute work. I'm saying this as a, as a, you know, BMAT exam person, like the chief moderator. I really enjoyed the, the six minute masterclass. And if you want to know more about it, go on the, my review on my subreddit. It was made like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you could back in the day. So basically, um, so some people here are American. So basically you can apply to more five UK universities if it's not for medicine. So basically if you apply for the common app, you can apply for St. Andrews, I think Edinburgh as well, Newcastle and some other unit, I think Durham as well. So you can apply for those, but not for medicine, but for like biomeds, Sciences, you can apply for those, but you can apply. For, you can only apply for four medical courses, but you can apply for more than five medical unis. If you apply, for example, U U UCLN, uh, University College Lancaster, and you know, University University of Buckinghamshire, that's also a private university. So you can apply for six medical schools if you're international, and also um, way more unis if you are, you know, if you, if you apply for the common app. But only six medical schools is the limit. So UCLN and Buckingham. Um, okay, so competitive application for UCL, as I've said, is mostly just like, if you, if you want to like in guaranteed interviews, basically sixes, I'll say. Sixes is basically a pretty much guaranteed interview, give or take. They look at it holistically, but you know, the, the way they do it is very random. So I'd say for home students, sixes, for an international high sixes is what I would recommend. If you want to get Lancaster, I would say like a, a 5.2. It's, it's more than enough. Yeah, a uh, recording will be up soon. Um, I'm not sure when, but it will be definitely available. Uh, specific formats that we have on the essay. Um, so, Okay, let me just think of, I'm just looking at the, okay, the recording will be available maybe a week or two after, I'm not sure 
Uh, that's probably on like Sebastian's side, but I'll say about a week or two, it will be available, if not sooner. Um, okay. Okay, so the 17.8 is actually, so do you know how we have five the assays? So for example, let me just show you. So uh, Zofia, uh, I'll just show you what they mean by 17.8. So, uh, yeah, I'll just use a blank page. Perfect. That is perfect. So, you know, for example, we have 9, 9, and 5a. So that 17.8 is actually these three. So it's like, for example, you know, um, what? So for, I'll say 3a. So 3a, let's say 3a. They have like some sort of weighting. I think that it's like this counts as two, and then this counts as like, I'm not quite sure. Okay, so let's say you have a five. Five, three, eight. So they do 10 and they did like the, you know, they did like this times two. So it's like three times two plus A. Um, they had like a specific letter. I think that A would be five uh, or, or three. I'm not sure because I, I think it's up to three because of the A, C, and E. Uh, but I'll double check this and I'll just uh, check with you guys. But basically, they'll do like six and plus, you know, three. So this would be like a 19.0. So it's like, it seems daunting, but these, this score for BSMS is actually section one, section two, and section three combined. So it sounds like it's not like, um, you know, eight point. <laughs> that's not what they mean. Like, this is not your average Brighton and Sussex <laughs> medical applicants. Uh, so th there would, there's not this because there's it would be this. So they look at you know all the three sections and then they will just look into it. So yeah, this is what th they mean by seventeen point eight. So let's say a five five three a is what uh, they are talking about when they say um, a um, a seventeen point eight. Okay. Um, there are loads of questions. Wow. Well. Uh, okay, so, so there are around 9,000 uh, spots for all the medical schools, but for BIMA itself, it is about a thousand, if I recall. So it's, uh, I think it's 200 and something for, uh, yeah, I think it's about 200 for Cambridge, 100 for Oxford, 300 for ECL, I guess about a thousand for BIMA unis and 8,000 for UCAT unis, give or take. Maybe a bit more, but uh, I'm pretty sure there's about 2,000 offers or uh, actually, I think it's actually a lot more, but. A thousand places sounds appropriate for be my unis. But instead of acceptance, I'll say three times that. So maybe 2,000 to 3,000 offers are given out because people will reject Imperium CL to go to Oxbridge. Uh, typical. Um, okay. I'll say, I'll say three is fine. It depends what year you are you looking for. Because some years don't even look at the, the essay. Like, uh, Cambridge doesn't really care that much about the essay. Oxford did love the essay. Imperial, you know, it's not that, the essay is not really that deep anymore. It used to be, but nowadays it's not. The, I'd say if, if you have a free A, like I think that the cutoff was a 2.5 2, 2. C for Imperial last year, if I recall correctly, 2.5 C. Um, so like anything above that will get interviewed. For internationals, maybe a free A will be what you should be aiming for. Yeah, uh, so Ravi, uh, if you get a 2.5 A in section three, as, an, as a home student, you are going to get uh, short letters. Assuming your section one, two is great, good enough. Um, so yeah, I, I personally found it being easier, but that's quite subjective. Well, what do you mean, what in is better? Because people say this, okay, what in is better? Is Oxford or Cambridge better? And the agenda is just like, what? Because, you know, what do you, what do you mean better? Do you mean better as in shopping? Do you mean better as in student life? Do you mean better as in research? Do you mean better as in accommodation? Who gives more money? Uh, who has better sports? Who has better sports at badminton? Like, it depends, but in terms of rankings by itself, or teaching style, same thing. There's a point where you just kind of get the same, but Imperial is a bit, tends to be a bit more hardcore because apparently they've, they've tried to remake their course recently, so it's a bit harder. So I'd say Imperial might be harder, but I can't comment on it nowadays. But UCL is kind of the same. Imperial and UCL are kind of on the same level. 
but Imperial tends to be a bit more famous for sciences. So I'd say Imperial for medicine because it's a science uh, or not, if you want to be philosophical about it. Okay, schools for Imperial, I'd say um, 5.8 as a home students, 6.5 or 6.8 as international. That's a good rule of thumb. Some people get higher, some people get lower, but these are like averages. Home students, 5.8 to 6.2 in each section, is what I'd say. Has been answered for UCL, 5.8 to 6.2 is a home students, a bit higher, like up to a school higher for internationals, is what I'd say. Okay, um, okay, so opinions on medic minds. Uh, okay. You can message me on WhatsApp, I'll just tell you more about this, but I don't exactly recommend it. I think they're okay, but I give them like a six, a score of a six out of 6.5 out of 10 for a reason. Like I feel that like I got really annoyed with the course because the person feels like they're reading from the source. They're like, they, 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 they speak like this. Okay guys, furthermore whatsoever, however, they, they feel like they're spitting up the dictionary or thesaurus and it's really not natural. And it starts to annoy you after like 10 minutes of listening to it. So I was actually spent more time getting angry at the guy for being robotic. Like it sounds like he was reading from a script. It was not natural at all. So I really don't recommend Medic Mind. Uh, there's, there's actually a couple of reasons, but if you want to know all the tea on all companies, then you are welcome to message me on WhatsApp or Discord or whatever. I'm always happy to spill some tea. Within like the legal limits, obviously. But uh, yeah, so 17.8, I've answered that. Uh, I'd say um, it depends like on your, for example, if you're, if you're a strong BMAT candidate uh, and have weaker GCSEs, then I'd say Imperial. If you're strong with everything, go for UCL, it's easier. Like, because UCL also look at GCSEs and personal statements. So if you're a bit more of a holistic person than UCL, if you're strong at the BMAT, like you're, a, you're like a BMAT genius, then Imperial. Um, yeah, so has been answered. Okay, in the meantime, there's 15 questions in the chat. I'll just check that. Um, okay, Lancaster 4.2. I'd say uh, Oxford, they accept literally anything, but free. The, th the thing is, like Oxford, they do a, this is the format that they use for Oxford. So, Oxford does so, ex oh, oops. So, session section one, uh, minus, minus one times five plus five times section two score minus one plus four over three, two times, do you know the letter? Like, no, the number, not the letter, the number. Okay, I'll have to do this at the bottom, this is not gonna fit. Okay, plus four over three, two times the number plus the letter, which is so A is equal to five, E is equal to one for the letter. And then these are the two hundreds. So these are other two hundred percent. And usually you need around 68% for Oxford, give or take, in order to have a pretty decent chance of getting, like at least about 70% about, about chances of getting shortlisted about that. So about 70% chances of getting shortlisted about this. With, with like 75%, it's pretty much 100% for Oxford. So yeah. No matter, you, you can have bad GCSEs, it's still like 75%. Okay, so bad GCSEs for OX equals 80% plus for the BMATs for like their Oxford weighting. Uh, if you have good GCSEs, you need like, you know, about 70 to 75% or even lower. Some people even get, for example, if you like the, you know, the the 13 A star person or nines dash eights, you need this. For this one, you need, you need like like eight slash to 10 A stars to nines and eights. So, and then this will be anything below like six A star and below that. This is this, this not like a perfect formula, it varies year by year, but I'll say it's like your average formula for Oxford. So if you get eights, you're basically guaranteed an interview, no matter what you're usually like, they don't care. Uh, because they trust their admission test more than GCC and anything like, because the thing about this, why does Oxford have an admission test? It's because 
they don't quite trust A levels and GCSEs. So these are and also for comparability because people do different specifications. So everything is just like standardized, and they trust their test, their own test more than anything out there. Um, okay, prepare effectively. So learn strategies, learn the content, practice, and do harder questions than actual BMATs. Guys, we have 44 more questions. The session technically ended, but I'll just keep answering questions until you know people have to go. But I'll be here for like 10 to 20 more minutes because I have nothing else to do for today. Well, actually I do. I have a session at, eight, at 6 p.m. with my students, but that's not, I'll just end at four. I don't really mind. Unless Sebastian just tells me to go away. Uh, okay, so. Um, physics section three, learn the content, practice multiple choice questions, because most people won't, most people forgot about physics, unless you talk a little physics. So learning physics, especially electricity, waves, magnetism, and radioactivity. Those are the most key topics, the maps itself. Just learn maths for physics. Like most of the physics is just maths. Like most of the BMAT guys, is not even the content. Like for example, and GCC and ADA was mostly contents. In the BMA, it's mostly maths. How fast you can do maths. So it's like chemistry maths, chemistry calculations, maths and physics, maths and maths. And biology even has some maths in there itself. So like, it's all maths, always has been. Um, okay. Has been answered for home students, 5.8 to 6.2. It depends. Five GCSEs. What uni? Are you international student is land. So what? What uni are you talking about? And what are those GCSEs like? Great. Uh, I'd say that Brighton is. Uh, I'd say that at the same level. Say, actually, but Brighton might be a bit harder. But I'll check that because I have a spreadsheet with all the unis because I do a lot of work with like all the admission stuff. So I'll just check my spreadsheet. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you have wait, which uni though. What uni? Oxford, Imperial, which uni? Uh, you can. So, for example, if you're from if you're from like Hong Kong or China, I think you can get the Jardine scholarship. And there's also, yeah, it's a Jardine scholarship. And I think there's also other scholarships for Oxbridge as an international. Go to their funding website. Uh, okay, so Islam, I'd say that most unis will be fine because, you know, as long as you have a good BMATs, that's what matters. Because your GCSE won't even count that much. Uh, so, like, you just get, get 6.8, 7s above lowest 6.5s, you'll be fine. Okay, so um, no worries. Okay, what else? What do you mean, what BMAT school would guarantee an interview? Like you can't never guarantee an interview, but I'll say if you're in, if, it depends on what uni is, but I'll say if you want to get interviewed as basically every single uni, get 774A. As a good rule of thumb, I'd say no unit will reject you unless you said something dodgy in your personal statements, like I hate patients or something like that. If you, if you don't say anything dodgy in your personal statements and you get sevens, I'll say you pretty much, no matter uni, you're pretty much guaranteed an interview. Uh, but sevens are a lot harder than you might think. It's top, top like one to two, top three percent in the BMAT. So remember, the BMAT is for smart people, like people taking the BMAT or medicine applicants. So like finding someone that gets a seven on top of the, like get, getting the smartest of the smartest cohort is a bit hard as you guys can imagine. I'll say the 2012 paper is actually easier than the, the newest papers. Like I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a story that I, from my own experience, but uh, the BMAP paper for 2012 is a bit easier. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Medicine person's, uh, um, okay, so medicine personal statement tips. I do have one. I actually have a webinar that I've made. If you want my webinar for personal statements, just message me on WhatsApp. I'll send you the link. It's on my YouTube channel as well. Uh, I, I did like a, a full on two hour webinar on personal statements. It was from my subreddit, so it's not from statement, but it's free. Just ask for it and I'll send it to you. If you want some. Personal statements help. It's over there. Um, I 
I started doing past papers like two months before the test. And I did like every single year. So 2003 up to 2019 and 2020 this year, but yeah. Books, I'd say most books don't, aren't that good. So just use the, the papers that I've mentioned. So the BMAT, the NSAA, the ACA, the ANGA, the SA Oxford, even the double JC papers that are good. And the IMAT as well, the IMAT can't be forgotten. Uh, okay. Some questions are being repetitive, like a bit repetitive, but um, okay, I'm just like closing some of the questions that have been repeated. Research work is not that important, especially because of COVID. So don't don't worry about it if you don't have research for Oxbridge or the London Uni. It doesn't matter. Just show your own research, like independent, for example. I like science, so I talked about pedicular hallucinosis and gamma amino butyric acids uh, and the nurse potential in, in like the neurons and all that uh, within my personal statements. It was very interesting. I really liked that. So it depends on, it was for Oxford though, because I applied for a very neuroscience college. So I took, I wrote neuro, uh, because why not? YouTube channel will be plugged at the end once I'm done with these questions. Uh, okay. Uh, it depends, Ravi. So, for example, if you have four point five and six, uh, for Cambridge, I would say that might be a bit of a tricky one. But for ECL, you might get away with it, and Leeds, and you know, Brighton. It depends on the uni. But I would say that's a bit too low. Maybe you, if it's a bit high, like five. So, for example, to get. 5.7 and it's 6.8, then that might be, that'll be fine. Well, you can't, you can't switch between sections. Like the BMAT, you do an hour and then the test, you can't go back. It's like the UCAT in a way, like you finish the section, pretend you run out of time and then you have to do the other section. There is no way to transfer time to other sections. Unfortunately, I'm not sure what question you're referring to. Uh, eighty percent is hard. Like eighty percent is quite hard for quite literally anything. Uh, you just have to practice and know your strategies and your methods. Um, I'll I'll revise like two hours per day. Some lessons are revising two hours per day. So I recommend two hours per day. Like even today, like on a Sunday, I'm going to have a session with my students from six p.m. to eight p.m. Uh, on BMAT essays. So we're actually going to be doing like some sort of interview slash BMAT debates, but yeah, two hours per day is what I would say I would recommend. It's really nice. Uh, okay, so company is best for essay. I'll say, um, I'll have to get back on you because I have a spreadsheet with these. Can you please message me on WhatsApp or like just on the system group chat, just say, uh, can you just say, uh, Martin, like, can you just tell me more about the essays uh, and what's best to use? But I'll say BMAT Ninja and the six-month masterclass is, is a good start, um, for sure. Especially the, the masterclass. I'll say the masterclass is probably within my top five list of the best resources for 2021. It's not in the top three. I, I really love it. Uh, like, it could have been better for section two, but for section one, three, it's perfect. I love it. Um, BMAT Ninja, it's great for like questions, it's good for like the content. Uh, it's being updated as well, so like they're doing some sort of updates. Um, the team is really open for feedback. So if you guys want something to be seen on BMAT Ninja, please email team at sixmed.co.uk and they will help you out. And we'll even like develop new products. Just let the team know and they'll sort it out. But I'll say that Lima Ninja is good for like as a, an overall resource, like it kind of offers all areas that you need for the, the BMA. It offers practice, offers contents, and offers, you know, exam skills and exam practice. Wait, Imran, you were talking about the six hour method. What do you mean the six hour methods? 
Do you mean what I uh, like? I spent six hours in section one with my students. Are you talking about that? I'm not quite sure what he's talking about. Uh, but yeah, just please say in the chat and I'll just like clarify. But uh, I, I, do, I do like my own questions. So when I teach people, I actually, um, they're just like my, my own experiences. So I'm not sure what you guys do, but this is what I do. Uh, I just make my own questions. I make them harder than the actual ones in the BMAT. So basically it's a lot easier for my students because once they, they sit the BMAT, they've done things out a lot harder. So those just literally destroy the paper. And that's, what's, that, that's what I've been seeing. So it's really pleasing to see it. Leeds 5.2, 5.2, 3A is a solid score and probably will get interview, interviewed every year. So 5.2s and 3A in the essay, solid. Maybe in 4.8, there's low as 4.8, it depends on the year. But I'd say 5.2 for sure, it's quite, you know, it's quite relaxed. Uh, what was I doing? Okay. Um, Format, so not really because, so people ask me about the format for the essays. Some, I, some of students use, my, some, ah, I can't speak. some people use the point evidence explanation or peel, if it's linking about the question. Some people use like philosophical structures. Some people use like, as long as it follows and your arguments are good, that's what matters. Like there's no specific technique, but the, the most common is point evidence explanation. Um, according to my friends, they uh, they have been examiners. And they said that yeah, that's the one that's more common. Um, okay, what else? I'll say what I'm not sure what you mean, uh, Darren. Uh, please tell me if I butchered your name so I say it properly. But um, I'll say the BMA is take both tests because you don't just stress and you know because if you if you if you have like a, a bad BMA at least you you have a safety school for the UCAT. If you do badly in the UCAT, then just go all in on the BR because you have no choice anyways. Uh, okay. 25 questions, okay. Section three, I'll show you the mark scheme on the, the future session. I think it's like se session six or something for the surgeries where I go over the essay. So make sure you look at it. I'll explain everything on that session. Uh, extra info. I'll probably talk a bit more about it in few sessions because it's not really like a strategy session. The like I, I I'm not going to do questions. I just thought I would just like show you guys structure and how questions look like, and give like some sort of overview. So this is very general. It's just like some sort of very relaxed session. Uh, is there any way that you can practice getting used to be online software? Yes, you can, I'll show you. I'll show you next in next session. So basically, there's already a demonstration that you can use, and I'll just show it to you. No worries at all. I'll show you the next session. Okay, it's good to get used to it early. Okay. Early. Um, BMAT school for competitive top beginnings, sixes if you're home students, sevens if you're international. That's very, very competitive. You're basically getting interviewed quite easily uh, with those schools. Okay. Um, Uh, you, what you mentioned the resources, what resources are you talking about? I'm not quite sure on what you're referring to on mentioned the resources. Um, yes, because basically the reason why the BMAT cutoff for imperial sales being high is because people that are getting better scores are applying. So for example, people usually only apply for, you know, Oxbridge, maybe three UCAT unis. Whereas this, these years, like 2020 and 2021 and 2022 now, people are getting a bit braver so they're like shotgunning all BMAT schools. So if someone gets a good score in one section, they get a good score. In, so if they get like a, a, a solid score for one uni, they will get a solid score for all three unis. So like they will drag their average up, which is very messy, but it's because like people that are good are applying to more BMAT unis in a nutshell. Um, Okay, yeah. Okay, what else? Okay. I'll say that BMAT is, uh, is easier, not harder. BMAT is easier. 
the week out is a bit harder in terms of like timing. I just don't like the, how, because the BMAT allows me to think, whereas the week out is a bit more time pressured. Uh, yes, you might be able, you just have to ask your test center because some of them will allow it. Like mine doesn't care. Uh, so I'll bring my own laptop and my students will too, but some people will just like, it depends on your school. Some schools don't allow it, some schools do. So just try to bargain with the, the exams officer. Yes, and also just studying the question. So think about, you did the question, think about, okay, so I did this question. Was there a fast? Okay guys, so the, it just cut off. I'm not too sure why that it did. Uh, so I'm a bit weirded out. I see why that happens, but I guess I'll just have to carry on with the broadcasting. Can you just please talk about your Q and A again? Because um, some people missed it. And uh, okay, I'm, I'm just talking. Oops, sorry guys. Uh, I'm just talking with the. On WhatsApp, just to let me know that it ended for some reason. So the session ended. Okay, I've just sent this to. There we go. Okay. Okay, that is sorted. I'm not too sure what just happened, but let's keep going. Okay, so how many topics a day should we be learning to cover all section two topics in time? I'll say you should be learning about, it depends, like I'll say about five topics is good because it gives you some time to actually practice as well. So four to five topics. If, you, if, you, if you're like really tight on time, we do three, but say that those topics are more than enough. Any more questions, lads? Uh, any questions, guys? We have like WhatsApp group. Good idea. Okay, I'll just send the link to the new one because a new one was made. Um, Sebastian, I'm going to need the admin. I don't have the link for it. Oops. Uh, okay. In the meantime, uh, Oh, that's a really good, nice question. I really like this. I, I thought. Uh, okay, so something that I wish I knew before I took my BMATs. Oh, that is such a good question. Uh, I actually wish this twin, I actually wish that there was some sort of like, I wish I needed strategies because I, I wasn't very familiar with them at the start. Like I didn't have anyone tell me you need to know the strategies, not you know the contents, because I focus so much on the contents and I neglected the strategies in time back in the day. But then I kind of made my revision more efficient with courses and like different resources. But I wish I knew that from the start. You know, it's all about timing and techniques. It's not about like smart people. Like the intelligent people will get a six. The smart people get a nine. As in, like don't don't work hard, work smart what I would recommend if there's something that I would recommend for the BMATs. So the, the people that get the people that get the highest scores are always the laziest because they they avoid they make strategies so they, they don't have to revise as much for the BMATs. That's what I've seen personally. Uh, it depends. Would you benefit from tuition? What 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 do you like what are you looking why are you trying to get out of from tuition? Are you trying to learn the contents? Are you trying to learn strategies? What are you trying to get? Because for some people, it's appropriate. For some people, it isn't. It depends. Well, you can you can you can argue you can maximize your score with just free resources. It depends on exactly what. If you want to go for it, the segment offers, you know the. What is it called? The BMAT senses, so you can use them. You can use quite literally any company. Just but if you want to check segment out, then be my guest. Um, Depends. If you have a good mentor, yes. It depends on the, if the person knows what they're doing. Because 
I won't tell what companies, but there was a company which um, basically they they recruit people without checking their scores and as in like so for example I know someone that tried it so they're like a year twelve and they tried to cheat it for a company and then they got accepted. Don't worry guys, it's not six minutes. Uh, but essentially that happens. They uh, they're like a year twelve and tutoring people for the year. <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's really tragic. But yeah, some companies aren't very careful with it. And you might not even get the most qualified person to help you out. So be very careful uh, with who you ask the help with. Maybe even ask for their qualifications. You know, it's always good to double check that they are who they say they are who they say that you know they are. I don't have any like I feel like it depends like because some some companies I'm not really I'm not really like into the I'm not really like I'm more of this how do I, how do I say this let me try to rephrase this I'm not really involved with the the tuition but I would say it's definitely a solid one uh, six meds definitely up up there on my list so yeah if you want to use six meds use six meds but. I don't have any particular recommendation, like honest recommendation. I don't have any because I haven't used all companies for tutoring just yet. Like I was trying to, I was trying to just like test it, but this is like a project I haven't done just yet. But from what I've seen and from my fields, they are solid. Sure. Can we go through strategies for approaching section one? Uh, sure, I will, I will cover that. No worries at all. Okay, so how to get good with attempting all questions within time in section two, like without, without prep? Without prep? Okay. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, I think it overrun. I think, you know, Sebastian, I think I kind of know why the session. I think it's because it was from uh, 2, 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. And I just overrun so much that it just ended by itself. So from next time, I think we should just like make it a bit longer so it actually doesn't happen again. I think that might be the way to go about it. Uh, okay, so how to get good with attempting or question with attempt. Well, I mean, if you want to get a good school, you need preparation. That's literally yeah, like, there's no way to like, if you want to see exactly where you stand, what I recommend, this is what I did to my students. So me as a tutor, this is what I, I do. I'll just say exactly what I did to my students. You might want to follow this, you might not. It's up to you. So your preparation. I told them, DMAT 29, okay, so. BMAT 2019, no prep. And then use this to do BMAT, BMAT 2003, do 2018, and then do BMAT 2020. So like, do this without, without prep, learn from your errors, learn from errors. You keep doing this again, like learn from errors, learn from that. And then once you learn from your errors, you do BMAT 2020. That is how I recommend people doing it. Uh, and that has been working out very well for people because, I don't know, I think it's just like a really nice way to uh, approach the preparation. Anyways, guys, you have more questions uh, on. Yeah, 2019 is the best one. No worries. Okay, WhatsApp group. I'm going to try to get the link. So give me one sec, guys. Uh, Okay, so. 
Okay, so I have two links to uh, to like I'm just like copying the links. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. I'm going to copy and paste these links. So links are here. Now it's time to go to Zoom there again. Okay, so. Uh, I should have got WhatsApp work for this, but okay. So I'm just going to type it out because it won't let me copy and paste it. Everything is not going well, is it? Okay, so in the meantime, guys, just make sure you just like send me questions and I'll just reply. So this is oops. So this is the main contact for six meds. So I recommend it guys. So if you want to contact six med for whatever reasons, go for you know this contact. If you want to join the group chats, uh, oopsie. No, I said to oh yeah, oops. That is a oopsie. I'll just copy and paste this. No idea. Okay, wait. Okay. API, copy and paste this. Come on. Okay, I think that should be okay. To all hosts and panelists, everyone. Okay, I have to do it again. Great. Oopsie. Yeah, for for this session, this is a bit a bit more annoying because I tried to use my iPad to do questions, but I just realized that. It's a bit less a bit more inconvenience when I actually try to uh, type stuff out on the chat. So I'll have to like use two screens in order to actually do, do this a bit better now. But okay, so so L seven eight six eight L seven eight six six four. So if you want to contact six meds, then use this link. If you want to uh, actually uh, join the WhatsApp group chat, then just use chat.whatsapp.com. This is how you do guys, if it doesn't work. If life gives you lemons, make a lemonade is what I would recommend. Oh, okay, I can't do this this way. Uh, okay, how am I gonna send this? I have an idea, which is I'm going to do it in this way. Yeah, this will work. As a good old Jimmy Clarkson says, my genius, sometimes, you know, it's almost scary. There we go. This is perfect. Copy link. See, this is perfect. Paste. There we go. This is perfect. Okay, so this is what's up link right here. And that's the, um, the contact for sixth med as well. YouTube channel, great question. Uh, it doesn't have any videos just yet uh, because I, um, I've been a bit occupied with my students by themselves, but uh, okay. So I'll just send the video that I used for, okay, I'll just send like a running video. And you can also see like my uh, Med Apps webinar as well. So, Someone mentioned personal statements, so I'll use the, I'll send the personal statement one. Uh, so that is my YouTube channel. We all just need a video so you can just find it. There we go. And now I should have the video and then I just copy and paste this. From next session, I'll make some adjustments so we don't actually have to do this. Okay, but there we go. This is my YouTube channel. If people want to talk with six meds, there we go. If you want to chat with me, join this group chat. You can always DM me as well. I don't mind. Uh, and that's about it. If you don't have any, oh, there's one more question. Okay. YouTube channel, that's it, has been sent. If you don't have any more questions, I'll give it like three minutes and then I'll just end the search.
Results for BMAT. I'll say BMAT Ninja is good. Also, the, the six meds BMAT Masterclass is pretty good as well. That is a decent resource as well. And also YouTube videos, like sometimes you can just, you can find some hidden gems on YouTube as well. Any more questions, guys? If you have more questions, you can also like just join the, the, the group chat, but I'll give you guys like a couple of seconds to join the group chat and then I'll just end the meeting as I think. People don't have any further questions. I lost the previous ones, but if you want to contact me, you can always do it on, you know, join the WhatsApp group chats. You can just, you know, contact the SIGMED number, ask them to speak with me. They'll probably just forward it something. Or we can just, you know, look at my YouTube channel as well. Um, I think that's about it. So thanks for attending, lads, and I'll see you in the next session. So if you have any, if you have any more questions, text me or ask on the group chat and I'll send it. Bye, guys. Thank you for attending. No worries. Goodbye. And it is now over. <laughs>